Welcome back to the Caspa Silver YouTube channel. If you guys are new around here, consider leaving a like on the video after watching it and also subscribing to the channel. We just crossed over 800 subscribers and we're already 10 over. I want to thank you guys so much for the support. You guys have been honestly killing it on the videos. You guys have been watching my videos all the way through. I've gotten a lot of good comments saying that you guys have learned a ton from my videos. So just want to thank you guys so much. And we're just going to keep pushing on. We're almost hitting that 1000 mark, which I've never hit before in my life. So it would be pretty awesome to hit. And we're almost there. So in today's video, I want to be addressing this question that I got in one of my previous videos, which was, can you address something that I'm still wondering about Caspa? Is it possible to create new Caspa tokens beyond the current market? supply so before we answer this question let's first take a look at price action so so far caspa is up 33 percent in the past 24 hours yesterday's video i was calling that caspa was heavily oversold as you can see down here our rsi went all the way up to 23 at one point and i took upon myself to buy a little bit more because it was on a red day. And honestly, it was an opportunity that I did not want to miss out. So when I see opportunities like that RSI under 30, it's like, hello, especially after coming down for so long, hey, just keep dollar cost averaging in on the bottom. And it looks like I was able to catch a bottom and we actually pumped literally like an hour after I bought from at one two area. We pumped right after that and I could gladly sit back, relax, not FOMO into the green candles, but instead FOMOing into the red candles is what you rather do. You FOMO in when it's going this way. If it's going back up, don't FOMO in. Just sit back, relax, wait for a red day. It's going to come again. Nothing goes up forever. But either way, Caspa is just so cheap right now that I'm trying to get as much as I can before we hit five cents, before we beat all time highs. I see this as a long-term investment. And if you're considering buying this and holding for a long period of time for two years into bull run, then right now is, is the opportunity. I mean, we were in this channel right here, which was a, a channel that could show that we're really close to the bottom. And again, people are gonna keep calling for it to go lower and lower. Any person that calls it at a certain price, someone is gonna call it even lower than that because everyone just wants Caspa to be cheaper so they can get more. But if you just dollar cost average in and you have a long term mindset, we did our research. We understand what Caspa is trying to do. All you got to do now is dollar cost average in and not FOMO into these pumps. And instead, when everything looks bad, when everyone's screaming, when everyone's calling for it to go lower, that's when you can casually buy in and not worry about anything. So that when the pumps do come back, if they do come back, you don't have to buy in. You just sit back and relax and wait for people to get all scared again because it's going to happen. Nothing goes up forever. But I just want to also show you guys that right now on the RSI, we are at a about almost a 40 again. And it's important to look at the weekly because on the weekly, I noticed something here. So on the RSI for the weekly, we're still at about a 50, which is still kind of high. Um, a lot of people still think, you know, we could go back down to this one cent. This still could be just a uh, like a, a little bull run, uh, bullish movement uh, before we just keep having more downsides. You could see here that we did, we've did we done this before. We dropped, dropped, and then we've had a really big bullish candle right here, and then we dropped, dropped more. So that could happen again. The only difference with this one is, if you don't know what this is, I've learned about this um, from just watching other people. This candle on the weekly is a dragonfly doji. And if you don't know what that is, it's something, it looks like this. So basically when the candle looks like this, which is basically what happened over here, our low was super down here, but then it, it closed, it's trying to close way higher. Then that means this is a dragonfly doji. And this is a, when this happens, it means it could be a reversal in the chart, depending on what was happening previously. So basically this kind of explains it pretty good right here. So Dragon Dragonfly Doji is a type of candlestick pattern that can signal a potential reversal in price to the downside or upside, depending on price, 
past price action. It's formed when the assets high open and close prices are the same. The long lower shadow suggests that there was aggressive selling during the period of the candle, but since the price closed near the open, it shows that the buyers were able to absorb the selling and push the price back up. So key takeaways, a dragonfly doji can occur after a price rise or price decline. The open high and close prices match each other and the low of the period is significantly lower than the former three. This creates a T-shape. The appearance of a dragonfly doji after a price advance warrants of a potential price decline. A move lower on the next candle provides a confirmation. A dragonfly doji after a price decline warns the price may rise. If the next candle rises, that provides confirmation. So basically, looking at this candle right here, if we can print a green candle next week, then that potentially can be a confirmation that the price is going to continue moving towards the upside. Now, this is just based off of this one uh, candle right here and just this one factor. But there's many factors you have to look up look up in the charts and i'm not a pro on this stuff i'm always learning but it doesn't matter to me i'm long term caspa bullish so i'm dollar cost averaging in and uh, ignoring all the noise so anyways let's get into the tokenomics so first off uh to start the block dag architecture with rapid block rates allows more mining decentralization and enables effective solo mining even at lower hash rates Fair launch in November of 2021 with no pre-mine, zero pre-sales, and no coin allocations. Caspa is 100% decentralized, open source, and community managed. The max supply of Caspa is 28.7 billion coins with an emission schedule that halves once per year via smooth monthly reductions by a factor of this formula right here. So you could come here to the Caspa website, you could look at the tokenomics, and you can learn that were fair launched, no pre-mine, and the coins, because th this is a, a key thing in this question, was first off, it says, is it possible to create new Caspa tokens? And to begin, we are not a token. We are a coin. Tokens are created under original blockchains. So Ethereum has a Pepe, and that's a token because it's made on the Ethereum blockchain. Bitcoin is an actual coin because Bitcoin is it's it's the blockchain. Anything made under a blockchain is a token. Anything with its own network, such as Caspa, using a block DAG technology, not a blockchain, it's its own coin. So Caspa is not a, a token; it's a coin. Just want to clarify that. And then we can also, if we click this link right here, it will bring us to this emission schedule. So. Can the CASPA emission schedule be increased? Yes and no. It can be increased, but it won't be increased. Reason being is because if they wanted to increase it, that would require a hard fork. A hard fork requires changing the code and splitting off the code into a new coin. So basically, I, in previous videos, I've talked about Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, those are hard forks that that take the code, they change it. And then if people want to run that new code, everyone would have to come into agreement so that they can run it. If not, it would literally create a brand new coin. So that's why Bitcoin was created. Someone was like, hey, Bitcoin's too, too slow. I'm going to change the code and make it faster. But that that made a whole new coin because people were split on transferring because the developers can do whatever they want. You can you can change the code, you can do whatever you want. But when you change the code, you have to completely go off from the main code. And then everyone who's mining with their devices, they have to willingly choose to go to the new code. So if they don't choose to go to the new code, then the original coin remains. And then eventually, if there's like a, a good even amount of split, a new coin will be created. And so can the supply be increased? Yes, it's possible. Will it? No, not on Caspa itself. If they were to do that, that would be very anti uh, crypto anti the whole point of Caspa is like mimicking Bitcoin. And the whole point of it is the fact that the supply 
is not supposed to increase any more than what is set in stone based on the emission schedule. Now, uh, to go back into more history and also explain, you know, why does CASPA's emission schedule, why is it 28 billion and Bitcoin's 21 million? That seems like 28 billion is a lot of CASPA. That, that allows for like four coins, four CASPA coins for every single person on the planet. Why is it so much? Well, let's go back in a little bit and take a little history lesson of what happened when CASPA was first created. So why am I seeing different max supplies in different places? In a nutshell, the hard cap in the code is 29 billion. But overall supply is an estimate due to the halving schedule being on DAA scores, rounding, original, um, game net, random rewards, and possibly for a mission to reduce with faster block rates. There was a random reward subphase during the first two weeks. So when Caswell was first launched, this is this is how the tokenomics was working. This is what you're seeing in this pre-deflationary area. You could see here that it was 500 Caspa every single month uh, that was being earned per block. So about 1 million, 1.3 million was, or is that million? No, that's 1.3 billion was being mined every single month for the first like six months right there, all the way, all, all the way up to the first nine months. But they were not decreasing how much the rewards were. So this is how it worked before where the block reward was was random in the range of one to 1000 with the expected average value of 500 but it turned out the average was more like 750 instead still distributed randomly between miners though hence about plus 300 million to the estimated supply of the stable reward phase the halving schedule is based on daa score calculation and since in real time the daa score looks slightly different for each node not all nodes know all blocks generated at any given moment thanks to the DAG structure, where there could be more than one block mined simultaneously in different ends of the Casper network. Each node decided separately whether it's already time for reward reduction or it is not yet. So miners on different nodes can have different rewards uh, for their blocks during the phase change period up to 18 seconds in total. This could give a slight uh, noise to the total emission, but that noise would hardly exceed tens of thousands of Casper. To conclude, you know, this is the max supply. And so to conclude, the total emission may change within some small limits, but is guaranteed to never reach 29 billion. And the most accurate value that is available for evaluation is given by the bot in the Discord. 28.7 billion CASPA in the period of 36 years from the mainnet start November 7th, 2022. So when CASPA first launched, each mind block was a random reward. The reward was on average about 500 Casper per block mind. It ended up being that for the first two weeks, it was way more than that. It was like 750 was the average, which was a problem. So then they decided to introduce a deflationary schedule just like Bitcoin and then make a max supply of about 29 billion uh, or 28 billion um, and, and saying that it would never go to 29 billion exactly, but it's going to be probably way less than that because, you know, people are going to lose their wallet addresses and their seed phrases and all that kind of stuff. And so there's going to be less supply, but again, you know, why is it this high? Why is it 28 billion? Well, ultimately it's 28 billion because of how the rewarding schedule was going to work. And it just ended up being that much cash, that was going to be given out, but also keeping back keeping to the core of what cast was trying to be it's trying to be a digital silver and in bitcoin's case it's more like a digital gold so when you have a digital gold you need a lot less of it to make it more valuable and scarce so that people will be incentivized to literally just hold on to it caspa having 28 billion coins incentivize people not really to hold on to it that much because it's supposed to be more liquid because it's supposed to be a digital silver and with a digital silver means that there's it's more liquid and and it's wants to incentivize people to spend caspa because they're trying to become a true peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system now this is not easy for caspa to become that requires crazy adoption and it's not going to happen overnight 
But either way, Caspa has built itself to actually finish Satoshi's original vision. But will this happen? Probably not in the short term and probably not in our lifetimes, but maybe down the road. Either way, Caspa's tech and innovation is set to make a lot, a lot of people turn their heads to Caspa because this is new stuff that has not been created before. And it's going to change the crypto industry, I believe, in the future as we approach approach the bull run and all that. And again, you got to look at perspective, guys. If you look at Caspa, there's literally barely like any exchanges that are listing Caspa right now at all. And so it's just like, it's not even on one major US exchange where you can buy and withdraw it from the exchange. They have uphold, but uphold, you can only buy it. And you can't even, uh, you can sell it, but you can't send it to your own wallet. So still, there's no one, there's not one major US exchange. So this is an opportunity, I believe, of a lifetime. After doing all my research, this is my opinion on how I look on Caspa. And, you know, just, I just recommend you guys do your research, understand your investment, because if you don't understand your investment, you would have sold right here because you would have listened to everybody saying that it's going to keep going lower and it might go lower. But again, timing the market never really wins. You can keep timing the market. You could try to time the market, but usually time in the market always wins over timing the market because eventually you're going to get burned. You're going to keep trying to time it lower. You're going to keep thinking it's going to go lower. You're going to get burned. And then when it starts pumping, you know, to time the market, you have to have really good emotions. You have to have good emotions to not want to buy when it keeps going down. And then you have to have good emotions to take the fact that, hey, we just went up 30%. Does this mean that we're going to go lower? I don't know. No one really knows. So you have to have really good emotions if you want to try timing the market. So if you're good at trading, go ahead, knock yourself out, try it. But for an average investor someone that doesn't really know much about investing all that dollar cost average is going to be your best friend don't try to listen to people don't even listen to me you know do your own research and be safe with your money guys uh, don't be dumping all your save life savings on here you know make sure you guys are are set with other uh savings in other areas such as like an emergency fund such as other investments for retirement don't rely to make all your money on one investment that would not be smart at all. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have not taken a look at my Patreon, we are currently running a free access right now, seven day free trial. If you join the bronze tier, you get seven days free access to the private discord where we can talk with like-minded people about financial literacy and Caspa. So if you guys are interested in that, the links are down in the description. If you go to the bottom over here in the description, right here, consider joining my Patreon to get access to private Discord and more. And it's free for the first seven days. So if you don't want to pay the $10 after seven days, just cancel it and it's all good. And then lastly, if you guys have not gotten your Tangem wallets, this is a good wallet to keep your Caspa safe from these exchanges possibly collapsing recently hotbit just shut down their exchange and now anyone who left their money on their exchange i think it's you have until june but if you leave your money on your on that exchange they're going to shut down and you're going to lose all your money and then what you're going to do so uh you can't do anything when that happens with an exchange these exchanges can go bankrupt never trust exchanges if you have not gotten your tangent wallet to hold your caspa or any other crypto pretty much offline consider using my code caspa silver and you'll get a discount you could choose two cards or three cards but ultimately uh three cards would be the safest option because these cards hold your seed phrase within the card itself instead of having to write it down and keep it keep it on a piece of paper the cards keep it safe for you all you got to do is keep the card safe and even if someone takes the cards from you or takes one card from you uh you still have that backup card and they would need to know the password to even get into your account with the card so if you guys are interested in getting a good cold storage option to keep your Casper offline, do not trust exchanges ever with your money, then consider doing that. And if you guys, again, are new around here, consider subscribing. And as always, don't be average, be different.